Hey there guys and welcome back. So I mentioned we would be doing this because I got this uh, joystick, official joystick. We will be tearing it down and comparing it to what we built. As always when I'm working here on the desktop with stuff, uh, one of those things my microphone is still in my way so if it does sound like I'm talking around the microphone that is because I am. Also to note, I was uh, I moved this over onto stream to look at it, see how it looked on stream because I planned on showing it to you later. And you will notice it's purple right now. You will also notice that my hands aren't ghastly white. Now I assumed that it was just the LEDs because I had it on auto white balance. And I figured, ah, the auto white balance, I'm going to trust it to be doing its best. Turns out it was not doing its best. So I turned off auto white balance and balanced it myself so that this actually looks purple. And uh, yeah, everything looks a lot less dead, I guess, <laughs> you know, a lot less washed out. So hopefully you enjoy the much more vibrant colors now that I turned white balance off and this instead of looking blue now looks purple. So at the end of stream, we'll talk about this guy. If you've been following the other design streams, you already know what this is probably. But uh, one of those things that when I preview the rest of the streams for the rest of the week, at the end of the stream, we will more specifically address that. Now, I have not yet taken this apart. This is my very first time taking it apart, so I'm going to uh, hopefully not run into any snags live on stream. The one thing I will admit to have done is to have been messing with the cage down here, which sets the direction of it, you know, four-way or eight-way, because I was curious how that worked, because it wasn't really clear in any of the uh, Amazon things that I saw. And while messing with it, I accidentally broke one of the tabs off that retains it. So I will admit to that right now. I was playing with the four-way down here and did break off one of the tabs. For the record, the way you change this from four-way to eight-way is you got to, uh, it's got these little tabs right here, right? And those sink into uh, little notches around here. I thought they went through, which is why I was trying to take it apart. So I was trying to take it apart. I thought these tabs on the bottom here went through turns out they don't they go all the way through so you just pick them up and then you drop them down onto the four-way or the eight-way uh side so that's how that works to start out with but i want to start from the top and obviously this is our joystick that we designed on stream i do not have the handle on it right now because i felt that was unnecessary well, I take that back. I was going to do a ball knob just so that it matched this guy. I never actually got around to printing it. Uh, in part because I thought it was unnecessary, but in other part just because I was lazy. I did have printer time available and I did not use it. So, And by available, I mean I have uh, obviously some parts that I'm still printing here. But I had an area, a section of the time when I could have printed it and I did not. So anyway, obviously joystick knob just... Uh, screws off here now this came with uh, this came in this manner it arrived in the package exactly like this with the dust covers and the ball off of the joystick I did put those on just because that made sense to me have it on to start off with uh, obviously there's two dust covers here I'm assuming one is back up I'm assuming you're not actually supposed to put both of them on I did anyway just because I'm horrible like that Otherwise, we'll go ahead and start unscrewing this guy. I'm going to unscrew it from the top rather than take the bottom part first and work our way down is my plan. If there's anything, I'm not sure yet whether or not. Yeah, maybe I should get it. So this technically works, but I probably, just for ease of use, want to get one of my thicker Phillips heads out of the kit here. Uh, I'm not sure if it will come up, but I have this, you know, available to start taking this guy apart if we want to. Also, actually, you know what? Since we're here talking about this guy and I'm drawing attention to him, uh, you will notice this collar on the top, and there's actually another collar down here on the bottom. My original plan was to glue or otherwise fix this shaft above and below, okay? That was the original plan that I talked about on stream. I was just hot gluing. Hot gluing I prefer to do just because it, hot glue is easy enough to take off. The problem is, is that my spring in here has so much torque in it that it was actually breaking the hot glue and causing the shaft to fly. Well, not actually fly out, but you know, 
loose position. So I decided to invest in collars for these 5 16th rods, technically 8 millimeter collars, works with 5 16ths. And my rationale for investing in the collars is that I use these 5 16th rods all the time in many different projects. So it makes sense to have some collars to go with them. And it solves my problem right now without having to resort to super gluing the shaft in place, which is what I wanted to avoid. I wanted to avoid permanently fixing the shaft to the assembly. So that is something I have not mentioned about the joystick yet on stream. Now you know. That is a modification I made to the joystick after I had it printing. So we have four screws on ours. They got four screws on theirs. <laughs> Logical thing. I'm sure many, many people use four because that is an even number and makes sense. Technically speaking, we probably could get away with three if we really wanted to. The reason we don't have three on our joystick and have four instead is because of the way it lines up with the micro switches. Our bolts go all the way through and therefore it makes more sense to have it in a square pattern opposite of the micro switches offset from the micro switches. If we had three, obviously you would want those in a diamond pattern. Also, I see that my camera is messing with the autofocus. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off really quick for this stream. Let's see, where's autofocus? Camera control, focus, turn it off, apply. Okay, still doing it? I don't think it is. All right, good, I think that fixed it. All right, I think. Now I'm getting paranoid and I keep on thinking that I'm seeing it out of the corner of my eye, autofocusing. So there is the top plate off. Doesn't need to be anything special with that. And it actually looks like, oh no, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, we are gonna have to go to the bottom here. I wasn't sure if this was gonna be able to pull out here. It is not. So we'll switch back over to the bottom. So this is the four way, eight way gate right here. We do not have a gate on ours. We could technically put one on here. Uh, one of those things we would do is probably replace these bolts with longer ones. I do not actually have longer M5 bolts. These are the longest M5 bolts I have, which are, I think, 40 millimeters. I think they're 40 millimeter M5 bolts. So we want a longer one to so that we can put a gate right above these micro switches. Alternatively, we could shrink the area down in the middle here. Technically speaking, we don't need this much of a gap. I have that much of a gap just because it lets me put a bigger spring in there, which makes my life easier because obviously, uh, as I've mentioned before, I am turning these myself and I do not have a spring winder uh, assembled right now. I have all my spring winders disassembled. So I actually did this just on the drill because it's a one-off spring, so I'm not gonna put together a spring winder for the one-off spring. So that's the situation. It was easier to do on the drill immediately. And because it was on the drill, it's easier on the drill to do it with a larger spacing between the coils, as opposed to trying to be real careful with and getting real neat coils. So anyway, we'll hop around to the bottom gate is held in place by just little clips so one of those things just press them in work our way around slowly getting it off yes I know it comes off this way because I broke it before uh, this piece for the record you can push out that's what I did before I then tried to get it back in and in the process of getting it back in I snapped the rod the uh, what you call it so there's your full story now on the bottom here I'm curious whether or not this PC, okay, so the PCB does come off separately. Uh, PCB is nice to have. We are not yet routing our own PCBs. The reason the PCB is nice is because right now I am, I'm curious what it would take for us to modify this because uh, the way these work is you can see the micro switches, their output, and input, well, one of those things, their plus and minus go directly to the board. They go directly straight up, whereas ours come out the sides and bottom, right? So I actually don't know how difficult it would be to modify ours to attach up to a PCB, but when we hook this up to the arcade stick, 
prototyper, uh, what's going to happen is we're just going to have a whole bunch of wires coming out. Now, technically speaking, I can, I'm pretty sure I should be able to link all the grounds together. So I only have one ground and then one for each of the pins. Yeah, I'm, that's what this is right here. This is one for each of the pins and one ground. So I'm pretty sure this works the same for ours. For some reason, it's one of those things. It's a little late tonight, but the point of this whole entire conversation is it'd be nice to be able to etch our own PCB and attach it to these guys to avoid having so many wires. Instead, we could just have one five pin ribbon cable coming off and we'd be good to go. Otherwise, the rest of this, uh, one of those things, oh, they actually do. Okay, so those are captured nuts in here and it's one of those things is black, so it might be a little difficult to see. But you see these silver parts shining through here? Those are in fact captured nuts. Nothing fancy about that. Just tossed a nut in there, it looks like. Just pressed a nut in. Which is cool. I approve. We do that too. And aside from that, again, as we suspected, this is just, as far as I can tell, just plastic. And it just has these little uh, standoffs to make sure we have space. Again, because it's black, it's going to be a little bit hard to see. One of those things, I wonder if turning the white balance back to more washed out might make this easier to see. I'm trying to angle it so that you can see this guy on the bottom. Or this guy on the bottom, opposite side. So you see there, that's stepped right there. So that's the standoff. Again, we have standoffs. The red guys on here are our standoffs. Uh, cruder, larger, etc than these guys but that's okay in my opinion so down here again we have the uh what you call it the clip down here which holds this on hopefully i don't send this flying across the actually you know what that kind of looks like it's so that's slotted like it's a screw the diagrams that I recall, recall seeing, it was just a shaft all the way through, which uh, with a notch for the retaining ring to go into. But if this is actually screwed on, that's actually an idea. We could uh, tap and screw into here if we wanted to, a little screw, and then put a ring on instead of uh, actually, I take it back. So the thing that's holding our spring up is f higher up than the uh, actuator. So here's our actuator. This actuator right here. Uh, do they call it an actuator? Let me pop open slide coin again to see. Slide coin joystick. Uh, slide coin is the site that I found before for joystick components because it was kind of hard. Yeah, okay. They do call it the actuator. Good. I'm getting my terminology correct. Um, anyway, it's a site. It's not a very complete site, unfortunately, but it has a lot of information in a very easy to uh, easy to understand format, or at least easy to query at any rate. So even though this is slotted, it's one of those things. I don't have a great grip on the shaft here, and it could be Loctited in. So there's some potential that I'm going to put the knob on to see if that gives me any help with uh, keeping it from spinning so there's some potential here that it does come off and I just one of these things am not getting a good enough grip on it to stop it knob for the record is not helping uh, do I have any grippy pads around here I don't think I do so I don't particularly want to Grab this with pliers, grab the shaft with... I don't particularly want to grab the shaft with pliers. So... Yeah, I think we're going to give up on checking if that's a screw for right now. And just go back to... Uh, attempting to get this retaining ring off. One of those things. Uh, retaining rings, generally, you have reverse pliers, right? That go in here and then pop open. Oftentimes, you can normally just push them on by hand. So you'll push them on by hand. Some of them, you do need the uh, reverse pliers. Those ones have little hoops on the end, normally speaking. 
that the worst worst pliers go into. Do do do. Oh, actually, that's a good idea. Me move that actuator out of the way to get to the retaining ring. Genius. Do do do. Come on, you can get it. Hmm. And if you didn't believe me that this was a uh, blind teardown, well, you'd think I'd be more prepared if I had done this before with how to get this retaining ring off. All right, we are going to grab these guys. Maybe I can get them into there. Okay, never mind. We are going to attempt the twist method. All right, twist method does not work. There we go, much better. Not having the right tools for the right job is obviously going to cause some problems. So that all just fell apart. But what we have here is two pieces exactly as we have. Well, not exactly and not 100% exactly, but very similar to how we have ours. So am I going to lose anything else? No. Okay, cool. Here's the upper part of the shaft. So you can see this is stepped down. And then here's the, uh, what do you call it? the pivot so the pivots the blue part that we have right here and it's shaped exactly like ours again on slide coin I saw two different styles I saw a cylinder one and a half dome one a hemisphere one I went with the hemisphere one on ours because that one made sense to me I don't really get the half dome one I don't get how that works obviously this is stepped so that the hemisphere stops right here instead of ours being stepped I have a collar up here to stop this from flying out here uh, it's one of those things, if I felt like going onto the lathe, I could turn this down to do the same thing, and then we could reprint the, uh, hemisphere, the pivot, with a smaller ID, uh, yeah, ID, a smaller bore size. That's definitely an option that we could do. Uh, but for right now, I'm not particularly concerned about it. It's one of those things, ours is a much larger joystick, well... No, yeah, I, I can call it a much larger joystick. Yeah, I feel comfortable saying that. So it's one of those things. It being a bit bulkier, we have the extra space down here for the collar. So I'm not particularly concerned about saving some space and doing it this way. Otherwise, the rest of the shaft just has that notch out for the, uh, what you call it? For the retaining ring. And this definitely does not seem to be a screw. So I don't know why... We have the slot in the end here. I, there's no reason that I can think of because the only things on here are not keyed. So since nothing on here is keyed, there's no reason why you would need to turn the shaft from the other side. So I don't really get that. Now for the rest of this, um, let's start from this direction, from top down. So this is the spring the part that holds the spring and the actuator. If we look at ours, I've got a disc up here, which is similar to this disc. This disc also holds the spring in place. My disc does not. We can consider changing that to hold the spring in place. I just don't know if that's exactly necessary. Now, one thing I will say is mine has a little bit of give in here, a little bit more give than this one has. I don't know if that's because of uh, the spring naturally, uh, no, nah, I don't think it is. You know, I'm going to say, no, it's not. Yeah. I'm going to say, no, it's not that case, uh, regardless. So I'm not even going to bother finishing that. Although this actually is something that 
matters. So, mm, I guess it doesn't matter that much. Okay. It has a little ring around the uh, top of it. So, it sits slightly recessed into the hole here. Uh, they do have a washer here. Again, that's kind of like my washer, but also kind of not. This washer is obvious, I assume, obviously, just to reduce friction between the plastic parts. Now, plastic, frankly, does not have much friction to begin with, but I imagine if you're playing games, you know, and, you know, really yanking on this stick, I'm guessing that the plastic on plastic is going to wear a lot quicker than plastic on zinc. I'm assuming this is zinc coated. So, one of those things. It's just an improvement. Now, this spring is a heck of a lot lighter than my spring. My spring is definitely heavier than this guy in terms of force. So, one of those things. I thought that maybe my spring needed to be a little bit heavier, but I guess that is not the case. In terms of, well, the, uh, do, 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 do. My actuator is a separate uh, knob from the part that holds the spring. As you can see here, that is not the case for this guy. This guy, the actuator and the spring uh, capture part are the same exact piece. And I'm gonna just hop over to Slackcoin really quick and look. Okay, so the parts on Slackcoin. So I'm looking at one where this is, it's done exactly like this, but there is a drawing further up. Hmm. The, the drawing at the top kind of makes it look like, at the top of the screen, kind of makes it look like the actuator and the spring retention piece, which is not labeled on the diagram, are two separate pieces, just like ours. So spring retention retention piece and actuator uh, that makes sense to me the I don't see why you need the long actuator at the bottom here if you're not going to make it la uh, significantly larger than the shaft diameter so the shaft diameter I mean actually let me do this let me flip this over so it is mm, maybe a 16th on each side, uh, 16th on the radius, radius, larger than the top diameter of the shaft. It is obviously more like an eighth uh, on the radius on the bottom. So I guess that is something I'm, I guess I shouldn't downplay that so much, but at the same time, it does feel like it's not adding much. Now, one other thing to note about the micro switches. Our micro switches I made so that we can adjust them in and out. Adjust the throw on it, so to say, for how far you have to move the joystick in order to actuate the micro switches. This guy, that is not the case. You cannot adjust this as far as I can see. Now, again, this is a cheaper, uh, cheaper joystick, one of the cheaper joysticks. So maybe that's just one of those matters of get a more expensive joystick to get the adjustments on the micro switches. But at the same time, eh, I don't know. It's basically what I'm humming and hawing over right now is I'm wondering how important that is. One other thing to note is that we have the lever arms on these guys. Now I was not expecting to have lever arms this uh, long on the micro switches these are definitely longer lever arms than i was expecting this has none at all which is kind of interesting so if i take this actuator and toss this on here do 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 and then toss him through so for our six and eight way huh Okay, so let me put this back together and see how this actually lines up because I didn't really look at it. Again, this is my first time taking this apart. But what I just did just now kind of suggests to me that this large part that is housing the spring is actually the part of the actuator that's hitting. So I don't know what 
actually, no, I take it back. I guess I do know what the rest of this long part is, and that's just to get us down to the retention ring. Now, the funny thing about that is that you could just move the groove for the retention ring up. So I don't know why you would need the extra plastic when you could use less metal material by using a shorter shaft with a notch further up. So that is not making sense to me at this point. But like I said, let's put this back in and see where that actually lands because I could just be, you know, misunderstanding it. Yeah, try to get this back on. And by try, I will, but <laughs> try to get it back on in a reasonable amount of time. At any rate, so here is our PCB. Oops. Okay, fine. You hang out for a second. Uh, another interesting thing that I just realized is that Yeah, okay. So if that's actually where that's supposed to sit, which I think it is, it kind of looks like it is, like everything lines up, right? So everything lines up. So in that case, yeah, the large part of the spring capture is the thing hitting the... So the actuator is this part that also houses the spring. Uh, let me try to turn that sideways to give you a better look. So, the larger part on this is actually the part hitting the micro switches. Which, again, so the spring is preloaded. I mean, that's fine. The spring can be preloaded. I don't see, however, why you bother making the shaft this long in that case. Because anything below the fat part of the actuator here is actually wasted, right? It's as far as I can think. As far as I can reason, I do not see a reason why it is there. Oh no, actually, I guess it's because of the gate. Okay, but let me start putting this back together because I want to see where the gate is sitting at right now. Uh, get the ring back on here. Hopefully the ring goes on easier than it came off because snap rings normally are easier to get on than get off. No, oh, my fingers are soft. Uh, where is my larger mouth pliers? And by pliers, I mean multi-tool. Do do do. Come on, snap ring. There we go. Now get the rest of the way, please. Come on, you're right there. Are you on? You didn't feel like you were on, but I guess you're on. Okay. All right. Anyway, now that we got that back on, and that was much quicker than to getting it off. Okay. So the real question here, uh, as you can hopefully see here, that is how much is sticking out of and again i'm working around my microphone right now but that is how much of let me grab something easier to point with that is how much is sticking out of the gate on the bottom here so it's about like let's say an eighth of an inch so it could be an eighth of an inch shorter because there's no reason why the retaining ring needs to be a full eighth of an inch off the top of the gate and the gate itself I don't see any reason why the gate needs to be this thick uh, the gate being this thick seems like a little bit of overkill the retaining clips here don't really need that much this is not load-bearing uh, the well not particularly load-bearing I should say the micro switches don't have any force going downwards against them and the only thing this gate is doing right now is keeping the micro switches up. So since the only thing this gate is doing is keeping the micro switches up and these micro switches do not have anything forcing them down, I don't see 
why the gate needs to be so thick. And if the gate doesn't need to be as thick, well, I mean, unless it really needs to be that thick to accommodate the four-way, eight-way transition, but I don't know. It's a little questionable there. So one of those things, I, uh, I'm trying to pick the gate back up so that I can switch it to, there we go. Trying to get it to the opposite way. There we go. All right, I think that's in. Yeah, that's eight way. So um, anyway, I don't know that this gate needs to be so thick. It's one of those things. I try not to question professionals, and in theory, they've sold a million of these. Well, many people have sold a million of these because, let's face it, this is just a clone of some something else. So I'm sure millions of this exact design just cloned across very many uh, manufacturers have gotten sold. So on the one hand, I'm sure they know what they're doing. On the other hand, I don't know why it needs to be that bulky and why you couldn't save on material. Um, one of those things, I guess I'm just being a little bit anal there about that. Like, So manufacturing, you want to try to save as many pennies as you can because you're going to do a large number of them. But at the same time, I guess if I'm only saving a penny on each one, maybe make it a little bit thicker. Eh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'm just overthinking things here. So, yeah, that is that. Um, <laughs> what do I think? So, now that I have... So, this was designed without the collar on the design. I could combine... I could do what they did here. Uh, here. Now that I'm seeing this guy. Move their micro switches up or move the top down, however you want to look at it, and have the ring, the uh, retaining ring for the spring, hit the micro switches. Yeah, my spring is definitely stronger than their spring. So there's that. I don't need a gate. I, I don't think I need a gate, which is why I didn't put one on there to begin with. Although maybe we consider that. The fact is, if I'm going to shorten this guy guy up, then I have more space to put a gate on. Again, these are the longest M5 bolts I have right now. So if I don't want to spend extra money on longer ones, shortening the standoffs here up, bringing this whole entire plate with the micro switches up to be in line with where that blue ring is right now, would give me extra space to put a gate on if I wanted it. Again, the only question is, does a gate really do me any good right now? As for other things, uh, other comparisons, again, the PCB is nice. The PCB having a ribbon cable instead of having uh, all these, uh, having the wire broken out across all these guys is definitely something I would prefer and something I hope to do in the future. It's just I don't have a PCB mill right now. Right now, I'm working on it. Uh, do 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 what else to, oh the adjustment on the micro switches i think is useful i do think that is useful i kind of disappointed this guy does not have it so i think that's one area that we definitely have the advantage on otherwise um let's see How do I feel about how it works? Yeah, so because of this extra little wiggle room in the middle, mine does feel... So this is a funny thing. Mine is easier to hit. Like, I feel like I'm hitting the angles easier than with this one, but it's not as... The because it doesn't spring back to center as well because it doesn't really spring back to center once you're past this point like if I click the switch it definitely does spring back to center no problem again the spring is doing work but because of this float right here 
Mm. I don't know. I actually don't know which one I like better. Just because... This one does have the stronger backlash, it feels like. Again, because my string is stronger. A spring, rather, is stronger. I don't know. That one's a toss-up. Again, just trying to compare... You know, bought versus the one we made. Hmm. Honestly, I don't think we did a bad job. I think this is pretty passable in my personal opinion. So, that is good. That is good because that means we didn't really waste time. Obviously, I did buy a joystick, <laughs> which is something I didn't necessarily need to do. But I figured, eh, it's like $15. So, it's a good experience. It was definitely not that complicated once I tore it down. One of these things. Well, eh, I hate to say this, but it's one of those things where I kind of want to try a more expensive joystick. Let me hop on Amazon really quick. Amazonia arcade joystick. And let's try to find one that's more expensive. Let's see. Do, do, do. Yeah, okay. It does not exist, <laughs> frankly. All right. I see one that's $30, which is not significantly more expensive. I was thinking more like $40. I was curious if we could find that one that's like $40 because I'm curious what the difference is between this $17 one and the $40 one. For all I know, assuming a $41 one actually exists. All right. So here is, I have found a $52 one. It has literally no other pictures than the uh, just stand out, um, it just the uh, from a distance. So it just has a standard, uh, this is what it looks like shot. It does not have any kind of diagrams or side views or anything like that. The interesting thing is I'm looking at it and it's actually got a spring at the bottom for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why it has a spring at the bottom because uh, if we look at either of these, the spring goes against the top so that when it uh, offset, it pushes against the top, right? Which wants to straighten the shaft back out. If the spring is at the bottom below this uh, actuator on mine or below the gate retention plastic piece right here. So imagine, I obviously have not swi switched you over to see what I'm looking at on Amazon, but imagine the spring being right here. That's where it is. That's the one I'm talking about. It comes straight off where this screw type head is and goes straight out like this. I could not tell you what that's supposed to be doing. I can see that it has a nut on it so it can be tightened up and down. I just, uh, unless, Unless that goes all the way through. So if the spring is at the bottom, but the actuator right here goes all the way up to the top, that would explain it, actually. That would explain it. So, yeah. Let's look at mine because it was easier to see on mine because everything's spread out. So instead of the spring being up here, sorry, I should probably like switch the monitor around, like switch the video around so that my right hand side is your right hand side as well instead of this being the left side of the screen for you but anyway instead of the spring if i ran plastic all the way down past the micro switches and put the spring at the bottom the spring would push up on the plastic and push up on this plate push up on this plate exactly like it's doing right now like the spring does not necessarily need to be pushing on the plate directly the spring could push on a piece of plastic up into the plate so that's actually an idea. That's actually an interesting idea. So I'm glad I did this much research. Because being able to move the spring out uh, prizes us with options at any rate. It's definitely an idea. And now I'm just scrolling through to see if I can find any... Uh, hey, $10 to replace this broken... Uh, gate on the bottom of my thing. What do you think? $10 just to replace one clip? Sound worth it? Eh. 
All right, I'm not seeing any more particularly expensive joysticks. So, and I'm on page six now. Actually, you know what? Let us go to a Google search instead. Arcade joysticks, because I'm sure that there's specialty shops out there that uh, probably sell all sorts of different joysticks. Yeah, there we go, here's one. Let's click on a couple of these and see what they cost. There we go, $40. $40 is what I was talking about. Oh, $60. $60, $60. All right, let's click that. Oh, this one is USB. Interesting. Not necessary for me, but interesting. Uh, instructions and pinout. Let's click that, see what it... I don't see anything that says uh, diagram, so I'm going to click the instructions and pin out to see if there's any diagrams in there. Okay, no, there's not a diagram, but there is a close-up of the bottom. The If that's a gate, the gate is above the PCB, although the PCB may not have micro switches on it. That may just be the PCB for the USB hub. All right, here's some diagrams but they don't really show me anything that's only out to outs okay do, 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 do. Uh, you know what let me I'm just gonna go ahead and get you over here and hopefully I don't accidentally forget that you're over here looking at this stuff with me and show you my uh, because up here at the top I've got the stream going on <laughs> so I prefer not to show you my stream background stuff okay here's cheap ones so I do not want to look at those guys. And these guys are more mid-range. So they're not expensive as the other one I was looking at. But they are more expensive than the one I bought. So let's take a quick look. Now nah, look exactly like the one I bought. Retaining ring, gate with the clips on the side, market switches, and PCB. So that does look exactly like the one that I got. Oh, here's a $60 one. Cool. Looks exactly like the one I got. Uh, so what's the difference? No PDFs to show me what's going on. Hmm. Okay, that extra piece is just a uh, cover for the, what you call it? All right. Let's see, anything else to look at? Um, bu -bu -bu. Nope, I'm not going to look at that. Okay, this site does not appear to have anything, any uh, diagrams, any good diagrams at any rate. Let's see, this was the expensive, the first expensive joysticks I was looking at. I'm not sure. There we go, $60. Cool. Yeah, so from this view, you can see the PCB right there is just the USB PCB. That's not the US uh, that's not the uh micro switch PCB. Do 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 do. Okay, this is the PDF that I was looking at before that I was uh, detailing to you. They just copied this off the website and put it into a PDF, evidently. Custom mapping, downloads. Okay. Yeah, again, right now I'm just, uh, since we're done breaking ours down, I just wanted to see if there are any different designs that I might be interested in getting. So it's one of these things, a lot of these ones with the black box, I'm less enthused to pick up the black box that doesn't let you see what's going on because I imagine it's literally just the same as the rest of these guys where you can actually see the PCB. It just covers it up, which is why I'm not exactly jump. Holy crap, $75. What is wrong? Oh, 40th anniversary. Okay, gotcha. So it's just a special edition. I was going to say $70.
where's the is this it is this the only picture I get like what am I getting for $70 eh. all right yeah uh, one of these things I have not seen anything aside from that whoops get out of here aside from that one right here where this is what I was talking about with the spring on the bottom so that's the only idea I've seen so far that is actually kind of interesting is running the uh, centering mechanism all the way up through the center to the top uh, or at least past the micro switches I guess I guess it doesn't have to go all the way up to the top because it just needs to go against something and you can't go against the micro switches because it would get in the way so as long as you get past the micro switches whatever you hit next then you could go ahead and press against so basically the way I'm looking at it is right here you see how well this is split because it's supposed to tighten up right but this second part right here I'm assuming runs up to something and presses upwards against the thing and then this piece right here is just I guess to keep it aligned I don't know if this piece is really necessary I'm not really sure what this piece is doing right here to be honest what the u-shaped piece right here is doing because in theory if I'm understanding correctly this piece shouldn't be able to be pushed up this top piece shouldn't be able to be pushed up because that's the thing pushing to keep the joystick centered so the bottom piece should be separate but maybe I'm misunderstanding it I may just be misunderstanding it is a possibility one of those things at 5250 unless I'm gonna buy it and then return it I'm not entirely so sure I'm willing to put the money out just to find out again it is just an interesting idea do 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 okay just random stopped working okay all right so yeah now let me switch back to camera before I hop back over to the stream okie dokie so that has been our teardown of this guy again relatively simple and straightforward and I've got minor complaints about ours but honestly ours for costing well, all right, so if I had to buy the shaft, that might have, you know, increased the cost to the point where it might have been better to buy this. The, yeah, all right, so here's what I'm going to say. At like 10 to $17 for one of these guys, one of these sheep guys, you probably should because in theory, our custom joysticks a lot of our custom joysticks are probably going to fit right on here with enough room to do what we want them to do so I'm going to say that maybe it's one of these things in between the shaft the collars the colors I'm gonna use for anything so I'm not so I'm not really uh, the cost of these aren't that big of a deal the micro switches I'm making all sorts of different arcade sticks inputs you know was the plan here so because that's the plan I again feel like I can discount the micro switch cost a little bit because they're going to always get used the spring was free for me but it's one of those things with the number of parts that I put into this if this was the only thing I was making it probably would be better to just buy again 10 to 17 dollar joystick off of amazon probably would be better to do this is probably acceptable in terms of cost just because a the shaft which would be pretty expensive you know it's steel steel costs more than plastic relatively expensive i should say so this might this eight eight ish millimeter shaft might cost something might cost something yes it's going to cost something <laughs> what i mean to say is it might be significant enough between the shaft the collars and the micro switches if this is the only thing you're building so 
I'm okay with the amount of money I spent on this guy. But maybe if you're watching this and trying to decide whether or not you want to print your own, maybe don't. Maybe just go with this guy and be done with it. Uh, one of those things, this plate, if you wanted to do something exotic, mount it in an exotic way, and you have a 3D printer, which is why we have this conversation in the first place, because you don't have this option to print this if you don't have a 3D printer. So I'm assuming you have a 3D printer. If you have a 3D printer, then you can just replace this plate or build in an extra bracket to go onto this plate if you wanted some kind of specialized mounting scheme for this joystick. But beyond that, unless I come with a good reason why the shaft needs to be much longer than this shaft, which I'm not coming to right now, I think I'm going to have to settle on most people should just buy the 10 to $17 joystick and be done with it. Again, we have the minor convenience of being able to adjust the throw on the micro switches, but I don't know that quite makes up for the difference in cost if you had to source all these parts in here. And one of those things, maybe before this stream, I should have gone ahead and priced out what all these parts cost me, but I was not honestly expecting to be this close between this joystick and the store-bought one in terms of how much uh, how it feels. I actually was expecting our joystick to feel a lot better than this guy. I was expecting this guy, because he was so cheap, to feel a bit chintzy, but he does not feel chintzy enough. And the added benefit of just being able to use a ribbon cable, whereas we're going to have to, you know, put, I got them right here, spade connectors on this guy, and then hook them up. Yeah, this guy has a lot of benefits, including the fact that you don't have to put the effort into assembling them. So, uh, again, unless I can come up with a good reason in the future why being able to either use this and take advantage of the slightly longer shaft is a good thing and this shaft for the record will get longer if i shorten up the inside here like we were talking about so one of those things i can have a much longer shaft which may have some benefit i just don't know what the benefit would have would be compared to this guy again until we come up with another i i'm repeating myself now which means that it's time to end the stream but bottom line is Unless I can come up with some other unique way that this joystick and the parts inside of this joystick gets used Just by the regular joystick is my conclusion here uh, I do not feel better about this for the record. I don't know if that's how that just came out what I just said right there I I, I think I might have put some intonation in that I don't actually it doesn't actually bother me that this is good enough That's fine. It's allowed to be good enough because I enjoy making weird stuff like this. That's the whole entire reason I've got the channel. Channel, So it doesn't bother me that this beats me out and is more cost effective for other people. Because again, the parts in this thing are parts I quote unquote already had. Obviously, yes, I did buy them out of necessity for this project, but I'm going to use the parts in other projects. So I quote unquote am not buying them specifically for this. So it really does not bother me, but... I don't know why I said but. There is no but. I mean, it just does not bother me. And if you need a joystick, go ahead and buy one of these guys because it's good enough. And if you want to do something interesting, you can make one of these. Otherwise, that is all I have to say about this. Did not actually end up uh, taking this guy apart, which is fine by me because, frankly... I don't feel like putting them back together, <laughs> but that does conclude this dream now that I have this joystick back together. All right, kind of back together. As soon as the ball gets on here, it'll be back together. So if you have been watching, thank you for watching. And as always, I hope you have a great and wonderful day, afternoon, or evening, wherever in the world. And I will catch you next time.